Hello and welcome to the Spark Accounting Solutions Show. I'm Jenny Q, your host, and I'm here with Julie Babcock Hyde. She is the founder and CEO of Spark Accounting Solutions. She's a CPA, CFM, Profit First Professional, uh, QuickBooks Pro Advisor. The list goes on and on. Welcome, Julie. Hey, thank you. I'm glad to be here talking about money today. Money is a good thing to talk about, and I really especially love this topic because last year when the pandemic hit and the PPP loans were available, a lot of people got caught by having not done this one very important thing. So let's just jump right in. Perfect. We're talking about paying yourself today. And there's a lot of home business service owners that do not pay themselves. There was a study done just to small business owners in general and 38% of small business owners weren't paying themselves. Now, we see extremes on both sides of things. You know, we've got a Goldilocks issue here. We've got people that are paying too much, and there's people that are not paying enough, and there's just a few that are paying just the right amount. Um, but I want to focus today on the people that are not paying themselves enough because in, in the small business world, and in the um, in in life in general in this in this country, between two thirds to eighty percent of small businesses and individuals are living paycheck to paycheck, which means if you're not getting one, something bad is going to happen. And so I want to make sure we look at that because a lot of times there are some mindset issues mm. that come into this, and a lot of times it's a it's just a failure to plan properly to pay yourself. So, okay. um, so, but I want, like, I want to address the mindset issues, which is like, why is it important to pay yourself so that, um, so that you will. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Be yeah. I, I can't wait to, to dive more into this because, um, there are so many things for business owners to think about, right? Yes. And this is one that, Interestingly, you go into business so that you can make money, and yet this is one that just gets pushed, pushed, pushed to the yeah. side. Okay. Yeah. So, number one, you are your most important employee. A lot of people don't think of themselves as the most important team member that they've got. They think of their other team members, they think of software that they use, they think of all these other things. But the reality is that if you hadn't started your business, it would not exist. And the reality is for most small business owners as well, that you're the one working 80 hours a week, so you don't have to work 40 hours for somebody else. And so we want to make sure that you are taking care of yourself. We, like a lot of people that have become an entrepreneur, started their own business, had, you know, the old J-O-B before that, and they were making they were making money there. And so I want to make sure that people are thinking kind of of that goal of I at least should be making what I made before, mm. but um, but probably even more because you're taking on new roles and responsibilities and you need to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, one of the one of the mindset things that we see as a problem with people that are not paying themselves is they start getting into this whole trap of martyrdom almost. Oh, interesting. Huh. Um, I work so hard. I can't make any money. Everybody else gets everything. And I, and if you hear those things coming out of your mouth, um, you need to figure out how to fix it and take care of yourself. Where can you cut, you know, where can you cut a hundred dollars expense so you can take home a hundred dollars more? Where can you cut 200 so you can take home 200 more? You've got to look at that and you've got to get to a place where you're not resentful of your business and want to just blow it up because you're not making enough money. Right, right, that, right. That's no fun. That's no fun. None of us started our businesses because we're like, oh, well, I'll just take the whatever's left over. No, we don't want that. We want to know that we're running a successful business and we're taking care of ourselves. We're getting paid a fair amount. Okay. That makes perfect sense. That's so interesting about the martyr mindset. Really interesting. Yeah. 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 It's, and it's sad, but we, you see it a lot. 
And I think we all get trapped in it sometimes as small business owners. It may not be about money. It may be about, I'm working harder than everybody else. Or, you know, this person's making more than me. What am I doing? You, know, <laughs> you, get, you get into all these things, these things that you say in your head when you're doing comparison with what's going on. And ultimately, you just have to be like, I need, this is what I should be making. And I need to figure out how to make it happen because this is my business and I can do that. I love the voices that go on in your head. I'm really <laughs> glad you're sharing. <laughs> They're frightening. They're frightening. We all have those, right? Yes, okay. we do. Yeah. We do. <laughs> okay. Paying yourself helps to build a scalable and saleable business. Now, yeah. Interesting. So let's talk about this for a second. I don't think there are probably a few people that like think they're going to work till they die. But most of us kind of think of our business as part of our retirement plan. We're going to be able to sell this business or we're going to be able to scale this business or so making all this money and it's operating without us. Well, here's what happens if you're not paying yourself a reasonable salary. Let's say that you have a million dollar business. You've got a, you know, a ton of employees and you're paying yourself $40,000 a year. What's going to happen if something happens to you and you need to hire a new CEO for that company? Even just a new manager for that company, are they going to be willing to work for $40,000 a year? Mm, mm -hmm. Probably not. Probably not. So, so we need to make sure you've got enough money in the budget that you can um, like hire somebody to help you if something, you know, God forbid something happens. Um, but you might need somebody else to step in and run your business. And you need to make sure you have in the budget a reasonable salary for that person. But in addition, like when you do get ready to sell the business, if your business is break even and you're paying yourself $40,000 a year, um, how many people do you think are going to be in line going, I would really like to work 80 hours a week for $40,000 a year? Zero. It, exactly. And so <laughs> you, when you're looking at that, you, you got to look to the future. Now, when you're first starting out, you have to do what you have to do to kind of get by. You want to make sure that you start taking money. And one of the reasons I like Profit First um, is that, you know, they give you the formula where you can start paying yourself from the beginning. Um, and that's important. But um, you start small most of the time and eventually you get up to like a market salary. Um, so you have to do what you have to do when you start out. It's important to pay yourself from the beginning. It's a mindset issue. This business should be feeding you. It should you shouldn't be just you giving to the business. It should right. also be feeding you as well. That's very interesting. You know, I've never considered this as a mindset issue. This is really interesting. Ah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go on to number three. You never know when you might need a loan, which takes us back to the beginning with the PPP loans. That's just one example, yeah. though. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, you know, businesses like if you were running an S corp and you weren't taking a salary, you weren't able to get a PPP loan if you were your only employee because you needed to have W-2s to support that. If you were have a Schedule C business, you don't pay yourself with a paycheck. You pay yourself with the net income from the business. But if you weren't showing any net income from the business, there wasn't much to take for PPP loans. And this doesn't just apply to, you know, emergency situations. When you go and you want to buy a house or buy a bigger house, if you don't have enough income, you're not going to get one. You're not going to get the mortgage that you need. They're looking at your debt to income ratio. And they're looking at like what the sum of all of your debt payments are each month to how much gross money you're making. And they're going to look at, like, if you're an S-Corp, they're going to look at your salary. They're going to look at your take, your uh, net income from the business as well. Um, if you're a Schedule C person, they're going to be looking at, you know, the net income reported on your Schedule C on your 1040. Um, but you have to you have to show profit there if you need to get a loan. And most people, car loans, home loans. PPP loans, maybe SBA loans, so you can buy a building and expand. You know, there's a lot of different times in our lives that we need a loan. Um, and and if you don't have, if you're not paying yourself and you're not making money, you're not going to be able to get one. So, yeah, plan ahead. 
I cannot hear you right now. Well, that's because I muted my mic while you were talking. Um, but so, so when you need the loan, that's not the time to find out that, that the requirement is you need to show two years of self-employment. Right. Things. Yeah. Right. You want to make sure you're planning ahead for this and really understanding. We've got clients right now that are looking at buying a house. And, you know, the conversation is go and figure out based on based on the income we're projecting, based on the income you had last year and the income you had the year before that. Go have a conversation with your mortgage person and figure out what you qualify for. Go have a conversation with your SBA lender and figure out what they're going to be looking for to evaluate that. If you know you want to buy a commercial building in two years, understand like what is what what does that look like? What do I need to have? What do I need to be prepared for so that you can plan for it in advance? You can't snap your fingers and suddenly be ready to be approved for a loan. It's something that usually takes planning to be ready for that, especially when you're self-employed. Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's now talk about number four. You and your family deserve benefits. What types of benefits are we talking about? So one of the things that a lot of people do and they forget about when they leave a job to start a business is all of the employer paid benefits that you used to get there. This can be everything from health insurance to disability insurance to life insurance to vision dental. This could be like, heck, even discount programs that you get to participate in as an employee, um, paid vacation, paid sick time. Um, when you're thinking about your compensation that your business is going to give you, you want to make sure you factor that stuff in. I am, um, I'm a big believer in your small business should take as good of care of you as the big business that you used to work for did. So when you look at how much money do you need to take out of the business, make sure you're factoring in. You may not be paying for all those things for your employees when you start out, but you want to make sure that you've got your life insurance. You want to make sure you've got your disability insurance, your health insurance. Um, you know, a lot of that depends on how your own perceived risk on a lot of those things, but you are much more apt to get disabled than you are to die. Mm. A lot of people skip disability insurance. A lot of people will skip health insurance when they first start out. And all of those things are personal choices, but there is no reason that you as a small business owner shouldn't take as good of care of yourself your most important employee as your previous employer did. So make sure you're factoring that stuff in and figuring out when you're looking at how much do I need to pay myself that you're looking at the whole compensation package, not just the salary, because you need, you need, and your family needs those benefits. If you, if you die or you get sick and your business can't operate, and you don't have and you don't have savings, how is your family going to pay for things? That's what these types of insurances are for. And we want to make sure you're factoring those into your budget. Okay, very good. You know, just hearing you say you are your most important employee, like that could be a mantra, like small business owners, right? Uh, home service business owners can like say that I am my most important employee and that would shift. Like, how would I take care of my most important employee? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at the people that you really value on your team and you look at the things that you do for them and you should be doing those things for yourself too. The other thing I like about Profit First and kind of the, the mindset of how the money gets managed is that you are taking care of profit and taxes and owner's pay first before you're taking care of operating expenses. Mm -hmm. So you're automatically prioritizing those things because what comes first becomes the most important thing in your head. And so that's, you know, that's part of the, the logic behind the timing on how you fund things is making okay. sure that, that you are taking care of yourself as an owner. Okay. Perfect. Makes perfect sense. All right. And number five of our five reasons home service business owners should pay themselves is B as committed to your own financial well-being, dot, dot, dot. There's more to this. That's just yeah. all that would fit. As the business. Okay. A lot of people are like so worried about growing the business and reinvesting and this and that. You know what? We, 
we see million dollar businesses, million dollars of revenue businesses all the time where, you know, there's no net income. The owners are not making a hundred thousand dollars. They're not making two hundred thousand dollars. They're making forty thousand dollars because they're taking all that money and they're continuing to invest it back into the business, back into the business, back into the business. And while that is that is great for growing a business, you're not growing a profitable business. Mm -hmm. And so when you're looking at when you're looking at like okay, I got to take care of the business. I got to take care of the business. You got to take care of you too. Because growing a profitable business that feeds you as an employer, as well as the business, is in the best interest, truthfully, of the business and you as well. So when you're making decisions, you don't just consider the financial well-being of the business. You have to consider your own financial well-being as well. You know, when we when we were talking about on number two, paying yourself to, uh, helps build a scalable and saleable business. <clears throat> In your experience, at what point do home service business owners shift into the mindset of, I want to create something that is sellable? You know, I think there's, there's kind of two places. One okay. is when like they finally get out of the truck, if you will, when they've got enough people on their team that they're out of the truck and they're the managing the business. Okay. That's kind of the first time that people start to think about, okay, what's, what's next? What's next? Because it's a new role for yeah. a lot, of, a lot yeah. of these home service service providers are that they're so used to being out there doing the work. Now they're managing the business and now they're starting to say, oh, what's next? And then when they start getting ready for retirement, they start worrying, worrying about these things too. Who's going to take over the business? Do they have kiddos that are going to take over the business? Do they want to sell the business? Um, and kind of looking forward to that and realizing that, you know, back to that whole benefits piece, they maybe didn't save enough for retirement. And when they look at their simple IRA or their 401k plan, there may not be enough in there that they start to think about, okay, I'm going to have to sell the business to help fund retirement. And so all of these things are important. And like we do see, like as people get close to retirement, they think their business is worth a lot. But if it's not making money and it's not paying the owner, it's not worth very much. Oh, wow. Boom. And so it's really important to, you know, think about, think about all of this stuff because you do want to, like most people don't want to work for the rest of their lives. They don't. Right. Some people do. And that's great. Go for it. Um, go for it. But if you don't and you want your business to be part of your retirement plan, you need to make sure that it's going to pay the next owner and that it's profitable so that it can do that, sustain itself and and feed the next owner. Really good. Really, really good. Now, if somebody, I'm imagining people are going, I don't know how much to pay myself. They can just reach out to you, right? Just go to uh, yeah. your Facebook page, click the contact us and and you can, uh, you or a member of your team can, can visit with them. Yep, absolutely. And, yeah. and there's, there's a lot of good guidance out there. Um, we obviously love profit first and they've got guidance about how to pay yourself and what percentage of what percentage to pay yourself, which is helpful. It's not perfect for everybody. Um, because different people have different goals, but it's a great place to start. Okay, perfect. And also there's a free PDF you can download for common profitability myths. Uh, just go to bit.ly slash for profit myths. Four is the number four, bit.ly slash the number four profit myths. And go ahead and just download a free PDF uh, for, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a quick, succinct and very valuable read. Um, and so Julie, thank you so much once again for some really, really good information. Yep. Let's, uh, let's go out there and uh, make some money for ourselves today. There you go. Put yourself first. Perfect.